Hi everyone, we are from Group 1. I'm Anato, NIM B04198024. Hi, I'm Megan Chan, NIM B04198005. Hi, I'm Govardhani, NIM B04198012. So today we are going to talk about the postpartum complications. First of all, do you guys know how to detect pregnancy in large animals? I have read some articles recently and I found it very interesting. I'd like to share with you guys. There are a few methods on detecting the pregnancy in large animals, including the biological, chemical, and physical method. Yeah, I know there are some methods regarding the biological routes, such as PMSG, estrogen, and progesterone method. Oh, really? Can you explain it in more details? Yes, yes. For PMSG, it's a detectable in men between day 40 to 120, obvious duration when functional endometrial cups are present. Peak concentration in most men occur between day 60 to 80. Variation between mass means that a uh, negative test result before 60 days or after 90 days. After breeding, does not rule out pregnancy. The test is latex regulation test. The result report has positive or negative. A positive result generally indicates pregnancy, but fall positive does occur if there has been any fatal death, af uh, fetal death after the endometrial cup have formed, which, uh, with, uh, which is after day 40. Uh, Askim, Zodak, or and Gallimanini test can be also used in mass between day 50 to 80. While for estrogen, there is more reliable mean of pregnancy diagnosis and approximately 100 to 310 days. Increased concentration of estrogen indicates a viable fetal and concentration will drop immediately if fetal death occurs. Estrogen concentration can decrease in late pregnancy and give a negative result in men in late pregnancy. A non-pregnant man has an estrogen concentration of less than 9 ng per ml and the concentration in pregnant men is typically more than 20 ng per ml and generally around 100 ng per ml. Besides that, Progesterone may aid in confirming pregnancy if it's a high at a time it should be low if the animal was not pregnant. In this situation occurs when samples are collected at a time of expected estrus if the animal is not pregnant, for example, from day 19 to 22 or 40 to 44 post mating in cattle and horse. High concentration at this time indicates there is a functional corpus luteum and has not pregnant animal be in seasonal uh, and estrus. The animal the animal would most likely be pregnant. This is useful for seasonal breeders like sheep and deer. In most uh, species, the serum progesterone concentration during pre uh, pregnancy is not specifically different from concentration during the mild luteal stage of a stress cycle. Therefore, a single random high value is not confirmatory for pregnancy if the stage of estrus cycle is not known and the sample is taken during the breeding season. Lah. However, if the concentration is still high at day 10 later, uh, then the animal is most likely pregnant. A single low serum progesterone concentration, which is lower than 5, uh, 0.5 ng per ml, indicates the animal is not pregnant. For buffalo and cow, if the concentration of progesterone is more than 2 ng per ml, it means that they are pregnant. However, has well has pregnant, other causes of persistent corpus luteum will also produce high progesterone concentration and must be considered too. Wow, fantastic. I've come across the chemical method, which is by using the pregnancy-specific protein B, which is also called the PSPB. PSPB is produced by binucleated giant cells of the placenta throughout the gestations. It can be used in small ruminants to detect pregnancy anytime after day 30 post-breeding for sheep and goats, and also after 40 days post-breeding in some other animals such as elk, moose, deer, caribou, and African antelope. It should be done in a certain time since it is very limited. False positive results can occur in the early postpartum period and false negative results can occur if samples are collected prior to the day 30 of the breeding. While the advanced physical method includes the ultrasonography examinations. Ultrasound examinations can be performed on horses, cows, and some small ruminants. In a, probe, a probe is passed over the cow abdominal wall or into the rectum to transmit the two-dimensional image to the monitor that can be viewed by the technicians. Organs of the reproductive tract as well as a developing fetus can be viewed using ultrasound technology. Generally, ultrasonography is utilized for reproductive conditions either to evaluate for early pregnancy or to diagnose conditions that may make pregnancy more difficult to achieve. Ultrasound can be used on cows and buffalo as early as 20 days after they are breed, but it is more preferred on the day 25th or 26th. While men are more preferred on the day 16 or 18, Ultrasound technology is ideal in a research situation where high accuracy of determining pregnancy status and age of fetus are required. 
In early pregnancy, embryonic sex vesicles can be detected. The accuracy can be up to 95%. However, as this method is slow and expensive when compared to the rectal manipulation, it is unlikely to be adopted on a large scale in a commercial situation. There's another physical method which is more traditional and less expensive, which is rectal palpation. It is the cheapest and most convenient method of pregnancy testing cattle. Using this method, vets can identify pregnant cows as early as six weeks after conception. They feel for the calf's head, a pulse in the uterus, and the shape of the cow's uterus. Oh, okay. So what uh, we can palpate when the cow is pregnant? Uh, actually, we can palpate different things on different days of pregnancy. For example, in uh, 30 days of pregnancy, the uterus will be filled with fluid and feel slightly thinner. One horn will be enlarged a little more than the other. By running each horn between the fingers, the enlargement in one horn can be felt. So in a 45 days pregnancy, the fetus is nearly one inch long. The vesicle around it is somewhat uh, egg-shaped and measure 1 to 1.5 inches in length. The uterine horn containing the fetus is larger and thinner wall. The vesicle membranes begin to attach themselves to the caracals on the uterine wall. Therefore, the palpator should be uh, very careful and not move the fetus about in the uterus attachment and cause death of the fetus. So the uterus in 90 days pregnancy is considerab considerably larger because of uh, increased fluid and fetal growth. The fetus is now nearly 6.5 inches long and is located on the floor of the body. The cervix may have pulled itself over the pelvic ridge and into the body cavity. The stretched uterus has pulled the ovaries down. The ovaries may be palpated on either side of the uterus. Because of the low position of the uterus, palpating the fetus in this stage may be difficult. From 180 days until birth, the fetus can be made to move by grasp grasping its feet, legs or nose even though the fetus is still deep in the body cavity. At 210 days of age, the fetus is 24 to 8, 38 inches long from seven months until calving the fetus may be easily felt because of its increasing size uh, so that's all i know for rectal palpation hope that's informative for you whoa thank you so much for the useful information other than that pregnancy diagnosis using a variety of method is there any other pregnancy differential diagnosis yes of course there are plenty of them one of them is the pyometra it is the most common pregnancy differential diagnosis Pyometra is a secondary infection caused by hormonal changes in the female reproductive tract. However, following the estrus of the heat, progesterone levels stay increased for up to two months, causing the uterine lining to thicken in preparation for conception. If pregnancy does not occur for multiple estrus cycles in a row, the uterine lining continues to thicken until cysts develop within the uterine tissue, which is a condition called the cystic endometrial hyperplasia. The cystic lining secretes fluids that provide a perfect environment for the bacterial development. Furthermore, the uterine muscles are unable to contract adequately, possibly due to the uterine wall thickening or excessive amounts of hormone progesterone. This implies that bacteria that enter the uterus and collects fluid cannot be evacuated. In an uneven manner, the pus will fill both the horns. However, in a normal pregnancy, only one horn enlarges. However, in twin situations, both horns enlarge symmetrically. Other differentials that are similar to pyometra are the mucometra and hydrometra. Mucometra is a built out of sterile intraluminal mucoid fluid, where the hematometra is an accumulation of sterile bloody fluid, and the hydrometra is an accumulation of sterile watery fluid. None of these have substantial systemic outward clinical symptoms. The build out of mucus or fluid in the uterus results in the inability to slide or fill the fetal membrane and lack of remitters, lack of progressive growth as in the normal pregnancy. Hmm. I have also read about the uterine tumor in the article before. 
it says that the uterine tumor is a form of tumor that arises as a result of uncontrolled uh, disorderly develop of one of the cell type prevalent within the uterus. The uterus is actually made up of several different types of cells uh, and tissue layers compromising smooth muscle, epithelium cell, and glandular tissue. Tumors can develop from any of this cell type, uh, leomyomas, benign cancerous tumor, and leomyosacromyce, uh, which is a cancerous cell, a cancerous tumor, developed from muscle cell, squamous cell carcinomas, developed from epithelial cell, and adenocarcinomas, developed from uterine gland. The most frequently type, a frequent type of tumor in dog is benign tumor that develops from the smooth muscles of the uterus. For cat, on the other hand, uh, are most likely uh, acquire adenocarcinomas, which is a malignant tumor that arises from the uterine gland. A bloated abdomen, vaginal discharge, the development of pyometra, constipation, trouble urinating, tiredness, lack of appetite, vomiting, and weight loss are all the symptoms of uterine tumor. Increasing, uh, increased drinking and urinating may also be the sign. Actually, I remember that I heard about the mummification of fetus a long time ago. And from what I understand, fetal mummification is distinct from fetal maceration, in which the fetus petrifies in the uterine cavity in the presence of microbes and oxygen from the open cervix. Fetal mummification is the most rare and significant gestational condition in domestic animals, having the highest prevalence in multiparous and polytocus species such as pig, and the process of fetal mummification differs between monotocus and polytocus species. It is most typically detected in cattle and buffalo during the fourth and eighth month of gestation. The combination of fetal death without abortion, persisting corpus luteum, and progesterone impact result in the creation of the mummified fetus. Furthermore, fetus mummification is indicated by resorption of fetal and placenta fluid, lack of other development, absence of cordylidone and fetal fluid, absence of fremitus, and absence of estrus and or uh, parturition, and the, the dead fetus will have a hard stone-like feel to it, fetal membranes become shivered and dried, fluids of elantois, amnion, and fetus are resolved. And the uterus compresses on the fetus and molds it into a dry, deformed mass, resulting in fetal mortality in the third and fourth trimesters of gestation. Last but not least, let's not forget the macerations of the fetus. Maceration of a fetus is the failure of an aborting fetus to be expelled due to the uterine inertia in the dilated cervix. Fetus undergoes a gradual bacterial digestion in uterine fluid by a process described as macerations. Macerations may occur at any stages of gestation. Macerations can be caused by the uterine inertia and improper dilation of cervix. Conditions like trichomoniasis and vibrosis are also causes of the maceration. Maceration is associated with the uterine torsions during gestation. How about the fetal position before birth? Is it just like a human with the head pointed upwards? Uh, during pregnancy, the fetus is normally on its back. Just prior to labor, it rotates to an upright position with its forelegs and head pointed toward the birth canal. This slippery, slow position makes the fetal expulsion much easier. The muscular lining of the dam's uterus grows in size toward the end of pregnancy, existing in delivery towards the gestation period if there are any issues. They are usually manifest uh, after the water sac form. If the labor lasts two to three hours with no visible progress or if the water sac develops but de delivery doesn't occur within two hours, a uh, pelvic examination is required. Therefore, the position and posture of the fetus should be examined carefully. A position describes how the fetus is lying. The fetus may be upside down, right side up, or have its back to either side of the pelvic canal of the mother or could have been even been placed in front of, behind, or across the pelvic opening. Complicated problems may or may not be found, and this is why examination of the position is a must, where you should examine the presentation, position, and the posture of the fetus and the dam. Oh, I see. But how will you differentiate a normal and abnormal presentation or a positioning mm -hmm. of the fetus? A uh, normal presentation of a fetus is frontward. Even if the fetus can be pulled in a backward position, there are possibilities for a uh, complication to occur. On the other hand, the normal position of the fetus is backward upward. During this normal position, uh, uh, during this normal position, remember never pull a fetus in any other position because this may actually lead to fetal uh, uh, lead the fetal to actually die. So um. 
A correct and proper position of the fetus should be presented for a uh, frontward. One or both forelegs may be turned back or the head may be down and the feet should be in. A fetus in a backward presentation may have one or both hind legs flagged at the hock or hip, uh, hips. Apart from that, a correct pos uh, posture of the fetus is with both legs outstretched in the bird kennel and with the head and neck extended along the legs. So, are there any dystokia examples that could occur during the birth process? Actually, there are a few dystokia that may occur during the birth process due to the fetus position. Uh, like uh, the hip lock. Uh, the hip lock is actually a significant issue that might result in fetal loss. When, the, uh, when you come across the situation, you should push the fetus back a short distance and rotate the fetus a quarter turn. But if the same thing happens to a mother laying down, then you should apply trans uh, tr uh, traction to the front leg in a direction towards the mother's flank or side. This rotation uh, of the fetus, enough that, uh, that one hip bone passes through the pelvic hole first. Then place the fetus leg between the mother's hind leg and pull towards it if you can resist on the spine of the fetus. If the delivery is actually delayed, make sure that the fetus starts uh, breathing normally right away since the umbilical cord will be clamped shut. In most cases, uh, in most cases, a fetal position cannot be cor uh, cannot be corrected. The veterinarians may actually perform a cesarean section, lah. And moreover, that can also cause a uh, leg back, which is an anterior longitudinal presentation with unilateral shoulder uh, flexion, which is a uh, leg back is a common malposture seen in fetus obstetric. The fetus head and one forefoot will be seen in the vulva. The correction of this uh, malposture is best achieved by giving the ex giving an extra dural broth to prevent uh, forceful straining. Wow, absolutely. I've also learned some other positions like the head back and postural longitudinal presentations. Head back are so-called the anterior longitudinal presentations with lateral deviations of the head. It is a lateral deviation of the head is a common calving problem. The calf is often dead. Both forefeet are presented in the maternal pelvis and sometimes the vulva. The head back is often mistaken for a calf in a posterior presentation coming backwards because you can feel the two legs but not the head. For the posterior longitudinal presentations, this is a usual cause of dystopia in fetus. The pelvic limbs protrude from the female vulva about one hand shots of the hook joint. Two strong pulls on fetus using ropes will be able to extend the both hooks within 10 minutes. Posterior presentations with fetus in an upside down position. These situations can be caused by twisting of the uterus or rotations of the cup. And that's the end of our podcast today. Little and little of knowledge makes a big stream. Thank you for your attention and we will see you next time. Hope you enjoy our podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.